Bill. Another bill. Another PR crap. An invitation. Another bill. Oh, what's this? A letter from Bette Midler. Where did she get my address? Dear friend, like so many of us in Los Angeles, I've lost a number of wonderful friends to AIDS. Okay, so some people with AIDS are too weak to go out and shop for groceries, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Project Angel Foods, volunteers and staff. Lovingly prepare nutritious gourmet meals and speed them free of charge to thousands of people with AIDS throughout Southern California. So what's the bottom line here, Bed, huh? Oh, great. Please give $15, $25, $50, $100, or other. It's other. You see, it's not that I don't uh, sympathize with people with acquired immune deficiency syndrome, but you see, I suffer from something I like to call money deficiency syndrome. The green part of this pie chart represents all the money I need, and the red part represents the amount of money I have. As you can see, the green part is rapidly consuming the red part. Given a choice between uh, feeding myself or feeding people with AIDS, I think I chose to feed myself. Anyway, I had more important things to do. I had a bunch of library books that were due, and I couldn't possibly afford a fine. So I headed west on Melrose towards Beverly Hills. It was at this corner that I was stopped for the lamest possible moving violation, not coming to a complete halt at a stop sign. Did I do something wrong, officer? I got a ticket that I definitely couldn't afford to pay. Got a pen? So I put a tie on over my tie dyes and went to court to beg and plead. Please have mercy! <laughs> it didn't work. The judge sentenced me to 12 hours of community service. Community service center is supposed to be in this building right here, 11330. Oh, I had a friend who once had community service, and uh, they got to do it in a park. It was really nice. It was this park in Beverly Hills with a putting green, and uh, in the morning they cleaned up uh, a bunch of wrappers and put them in a trash can and spent three or four hours just sort of lounging about the park. Uh, so that sounds okay. Let's hope I can get something that nice. I don't believe it. I mean, yeah, great, so they give me a choice. I got a choice between cleaning the Johns at the Hollywood YMCA or uh, delivering food for Project Angel Food. It's ridiculous. I mean, well, bad. It looks like you got your way. <laughs> Just He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. Oh, I see somebody delivering food here. It doesn't look too hard. Of course, I did once deliver uh, food for uh, Chicken Delight about 20 years ago when I was in high school sort of scared about the fact that it's a church, you know? Um, I mean, I don't mean mind delivering food to people, but a church, do we have to say a prayer before we do this? So let's just uh, get this over with. Let's hope that there's nothing religious behind this whole thing, you know? I don't want him to try to, to teach me anything profound. Michael there? Hi Michael, I'm Mark. Mark. Yeah, so uh, what do I need to do here? Uh, this is your first day in, right? Yeah. Okay, let's start by having you fill out one of our volunteer profiles. You're not going to be helping in the kitchen today, you'll help us deliver meals, so let's have you read this over as well right. as this, help the comments. Mm, let's see, okay, volunteer profile, emergency contact. Uh, mm -hmm. Why do you want to volunteer for Project Angel Food? I don't. Okay, thank you all very much for coming today. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for volunteering to help us take food to people that are homebound with AIDS. This is a sample of our route sheet, and what it includes is information like the total number of meals that you'll have to deliver. The meals are already arranged in the order in which you'll deliver them. Down the left column are the names of the people that you're going to be taking food to as well as special meal requirements and special meal items. There's a couple things we'd like you to keep in mind. Take your lead from the client. If they want you to, to come in and spend time with them, you know, 
go right ahead if, if that's something you're comfortable with. There's some things that I want to uh, reiterate from our delivery sheet, and that is that you do not mention Project Angel Food. The reason for that is that we're delivering to people with HIV and AIDS. We want to protect their privacy. And um, so if you have to talk to a neighbor or uh, the manager of a building in the course of delivering the meal, just identify yourself as a friend delivering a meal. That's all you have to say. Now, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit nervous about this. I mean, I've never actually met somebody who I knew had AIDS. I mean, I have had friends and acquaintances who've died of AIDS, but I didn't know they had it until they had passed on. It's not that I'm that really scared of it, it's just that it's gonna be a new experience. This place depressed me. I didn't stick around to see if they were home. I just left the food and got the hell out of there. So um, you've seen a lot of movies get shot here? I mean... L.A. Story was done here, and uh, a couple other comedy ones. Bob and Ted, great something weird movie, I forget the name. Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted something, yeah. Oh, boy, this looks dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's daily. Really? You have to take a lot of medicine? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 And I have to IV every day. You know how you know who's male and who's female? The male has blue above the beak and the female has brown. I don't deal with them anymore. They used to, I used to play with them. We used to have uh, bird ball. In the summer, I would give them a bath. Mm -hmm. And then you can't really dry them, so you throw them in the air and then they flutter and then you catch them. <laughs> right. You throw them in the air and they flutter and you catch them. And they would get caught in the, uh, in the rug there and stuff. They're cute. There were 12. And then like in the Indians, now there's five. Yeah. So now I don't play with them anymore. And then the cats in the neighborhood, I can't play with them anymore, so. But this has to do with the virus somehow. Yeah, MAI is what you get from birds. Uh, so you get toxo from uh, cats, and you get this from this and this from that. And so all you know is that your medicine chest gets fuller and fuller and fuller with stuff. Did you take many medicines, or you... Oh, tons, tons. Yeah. But then I stopped taking them for a while, too. That was in there. Oh, again, who cares, you know? You tried to get organic, and... I'm not on track with all that yet, but I'm at least educating myself as far as food substances, stress, etc., rest factors, and all. I have always felt that that there is there's cures, and that the pharmaceutical companies aren't releasing the cures because they're making a fortune off this. I mean, one of just one of the drugs that I take is six hundred dollars a month. Now I don't have health insurance. So, um, <laughs> what I've been doing is, it's, it's for the, 
the yeast infections, you know, thrush and all that. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is when I get it, I take it, and within two or three days it goes away, then I stop. So I have something, you know. The strange thing about it is, is uh, trying to remember that you're still a person, not a disease. When you're so overwhelmed with it at times, you forget, it's easy to forget that there's still a, a person and a soul and a spirit that's going through all this and that you're not all this pain and you're not all this suffering and you're not all this anguish. I take anti-parakeet, anti-cat, anti-people who get me pissed off medicine. I get... <laughs> Do you get out very much? Or... No, I stay locked inside the place <laughs> as much as possible. By the curtains, you know. Really? But I'm starting to so more. How, how come? I mean, is it? Well, part of I mean, it you look healthy. dealing with um, the loss of my friend and um, putting all that back together, putting myself back together, and mm -hmm. being able to deal with everything that's going on. You know, kind of shut down for about two or three months. You know, right. I don't go out to the bars anymore because people that are in there. Not everyone, but you know, the majority of them are um, alcoholics, drug addicts, hookers, or in denial of HIV. I mean, that's like a major thing that I've been seeing lately. But denial of HIV? Uh -huh. I don't think it takes a, a dummy to realize after a couple months of that, of, you know, with the way that the gay society is, this one's sleeping with that one, that one's sleeping with that one, and so on and so forth. And they're all like either not because I've done this myself. <laughs> they're either not saying what their HIV status is or they're in denial of their HIV status. Mm -hmm. And it like just hit me like a rock. Like, oh, wait a minute. This is not the path that I want to go down. At this point, sex doesn't mean anything. I mean, cuddling is nice, you know. What's nice now that, you know, that I don't have all these <clears throat> whatever, is that you can leave your sheets on in bed for two weeks and they're still clean. <laughs> Whereas Friday night you put them on, Saturday morning it's like, oh my God, where's this squeegee? But, um... Do you tend to want to be a hermit? I mean, do you, do you stay home? Or? I tend to be a hermit now only because I don't have the, the strength to, like, be productive. Right. Um, my productivity is in, in painting. And have you, have you ever had a show? Have you sold them or anything? I've had a few shows. Most of it I've just sold to friends over the years. This one generally is everyone's favorite. It's a, uh, a woman who was in federal housing who was being evicted because she had a cat. And she had no relatives. It was the only person or any, you know, living thing in her life. And uh, she was being evicted because she owned a cat. And I thought that was really absurd, so I composed this painting. But they're all telling me the same thing. You need to get out of the house a little more and, you know, come back to life. So I'm sort of in the midst of that process. You put together a life, it also means physical health, mental health, spiritual, whatever. Yeah. That makes a big difference, I think, in how you can live with the virus. And I think a lot of people go through a mourning and a death of themselves, too, when they find out. And once you start to pull out of that, um, it gets a little easier, A, to ask for the help, to start to work on the things that are there, you know. That's become sort of like the primary objective now, is to stop falling apart and saying, wait a minute, what can I do to help other people that have gone through the same kind of shutdown, you know. But that's even hard to do, because then you have to second guess yourself, why am I really doing this? Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Which is something that volunteers go through, too. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I do what I can each day, and that was the other day we had almost a case of these um, that we weren't drinking. So I put them all in a box. I'm like, you know, I'm only two blocks away, so I go ten blocks and I put the thing, I mean ten steps, and I put it down, and then I'd rest, you know. And then I'd pick it up and I'd do ten more steps. It took me 45 minutes to go two blocks, but I did it. I came down in 90, and then last October all hell broke loose, and it's just gotten, um, I feel better when I get my, my blood, 
I have the vampire, you know, I come back to life. Do you get a transfusion? Yeah, and it's amazing. I mean, your skin gets better, and you know, you feel energy, and you can think. It's it's really it's bizarre. You know, you see like on TV when the, the vampires like, ah, and then they get their blood, and they're like ready to go <laughs> flying or whatever. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what it's like. The high lasts about uh, a week, mm -hmm. and then it starts to wear off and stuff. But um, he was saying the next time I get a transfusion, we're going to go to Disneyland and stuff. Because I can't go there in a wheelchair. No. I mean, half the fun is seeing the kids running around, and you know, I don't want to be in their way. And that's part of the fun of seeing them. So, uh, we'll see when that is. I've just moved into a new thing that I do inside of me. Uh, and, you know, like when the physical things happen, I just say to myself, this is only happening to my body. It's just not happening what's inside of me or who I am, you know, or what I'm about. And, like, I just keep repeating that, repeating that, and, you know, <laughs> I get better. You know, you see a spot, and you're like, ah, oh, you know. Exactly. Okay, that's just my body. It's not really who I am. It took a long time to get to that. Uh, this sounds crazy. But two of my friends that passed on, at the time period that they passed, I felt like a spiritual jolt. Twice. And when he left, I think he went shopping first because I didn't feel it. Now every once in a while I do get like a slap in the face in the middle of the night uh, and I know it's him. But uh, I knew that I know that there's more. I really do and I believe in that. And it's not that you know the drugs are, t are making my mind go crazy. When I move into my heart or my loving, you know, just like listening to somebody who's, who may be sicker than me, this is what he's experiencing. And just accept, you know, it's not my experience, it's his. And so all I can do is stay in my loving and listen to him. And when I do that, it seems to lift him, as well as myself. I mean, nothing really changes, because if you burn a piece of paper, it becomes ashes. And if you scatter them, it becomes dust. It hasn't destroyed it, it's just altered. You know, life is an ongoing journey uh, and after this one, there'll be another, and another, and another, and it's, you know, life just doesn't stop. It's illogical, <laughs> to me anyway. Yeah! It was angel food. They needed somebody. So if you're walking down the street sometime And you should spot some hollow ancient eyes Don't you pass them by instead As if you didn't care Say hello 